All right, guys, welcome back. Discount Property Investors. David Dodge with my host, my co-host, Mr. Mike Slain. Hey, David, how are we today? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Feeling good. Getting Same. Organized yeah. over here. Damn it's it. a little sunny out. It's getting it's warmer. It's beautiful out there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Spring is springing, man. So it's a good time to get out there, walk the dogs, ride a bike, all those springtime activities market for sellers, you know, things like that. All the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, so marketing for sellers, guys. I slipped that one in there, not necessarily a spring activity. That is an everyday activity if you are a wholesaler. Dave and I, it's one of our favorite things to talk about and to work on. I think we both just kind of like marketing, which is kind of fun. Oh, um, yeah. The reason for that, we are wholesalers and rental investors and rehabbers and, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. Dave's got a couple of little businesses uh, that he's doing as well. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. You're in a business of marketing. So today we're talking to uh, the wholesaler audience. Hopefully you guys are interested in learning how to wholesale. Uh, real quick overview, what wholesaling is, is buying a property at a great price and selling it at a good price and making a profit in between. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you don't want to say you're selling the property. Uh, you only want to say you are selling the contract. And that is very true when you're signing it. Uh, if you double close it, it's a little bit different. Uh, but again, just uh, the, the, the basic principle is buying something very low, selling something a little bit higher, but still at a great price for somebody else. And you make the spread. So that's wholesaling real estate. So how do you find properties at a great price? It's simple, you have to market consistently. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Dave, you wanna kick us off or you want me to keep going? No, keep going, man, you're Perfect. doing great. Perfect, okay, so the number one uh, way that I like to market, and I kind of rank these uh, in order of cost as well, and it starts to get a little murky, but uh, the least expensive way is probably gonna take the most time. And you'll often find there's an inverse relationship between those two things. Uh, so the one that I like the most and I'm a big proponent of is networking. When you are just beginning in this real estate game, you have to network. You've got to find out who is doing what in your local area. And that is just going to help huge. You are going to... Um, Hey, look at that. Dave's, yeah, Dave's uh, playing with the video here. If you oh, want, yeah, guys, we're going to make this, like this man, going, guys, keep making a list. Going. All right. Yeah. Cool. Buddy. So net networking's number one. And again, it is an inexpensive way to find leads and to learn what is working in your local market. You're going to meet other wholesalers. You're going to meet rental buyers. You're going to meet, um, again, random people. If you're just going to different types of networking, if you're going to real estate specific, again, you're going to find people. Hopefully you can, uh, joint venture with. So that would be the first type of uh, networking you're going to do. You're going to find other wholesalers and say, oh, hey, I got this property or contract. I can't find nobody to buy it. Well, guess what? If you can find somebody to buy it, you can help him. You can joint venture and put a deal together that way. So that's uh, networking. Uh, you'll find, like I said, you'll find some sellers uh, through joint venturing. Heck, you might even find you're able to wholesale a deal from someone that is also just a real estate investor. Some people don't necessarily know how to wholesale. That's okay. If they have a property and they're looking to sell it and they're willing to sell it for, you know, a good deal because, Hey, they're, an, they know they're an investor. Great. All the better. Again, you can, you can have another investor who has a property. They said, ah, oh, my tenant moved out and trashed it. And if, if you can sell that property to somebody else for a little higher, then they're asking for it. That's great. So you can find sellers at networking events. I've done it. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say it. I mean, it, no, it, I love finding sellers at networking events. It happens all the time. Yeah. So again, so you can find sellers there. Uh, you're also going to find a lot of your buyers there at networking events. So it's really a twofold strategy. You're able to market your deals once you get them under contract. Uh, another way to uh, market. And we said, we'll kind of do the inverse thing is, um, you know, the, the least expensive, the most expensive. So I'm going to, I'm going to say cold calling would probably be next on the list of ways to network. I like that. Uh, cold so cold calling. calling. Dave, what do we do when we're cold calling? Uh, cold calling. You are getting somebody's contact information after you skip trace them. 
and you call them up and you just say, hey, I am looking to buy some properties in the area. I'm buying houses in the neighborhood or on the street and we buy to fix them up and, and flip them. We also buy to hold them and rent them. Do you have uh, any property that you're looking to sell? And that's it, you're just calling up, making a friend. It's cold, it's a cold lead. That's why it's called cold calling. And uh, it's no different than you, you know, doing other types of marketing. You are just you know, doing the outreach yourself. You could hire someone to do it as well, but uh, you are doing the outreach. You're essentially gonna be trading time. Um, to get leads versus money in this scenario. Now, some money might be required to get a dialer um, or even to do skip tracing if you decide that you wanna go that route. Um, or you can just write down addresses, go to the county records, find the owner, and then go to free sites like truepeoplesearch.com and get that same information. Awesome, so then I also, I kind of include these two together, Dave, is cold calling and now cold texting. So it'd be similar where you would, uh, like Dave's described, you'd find, you'd get a list. Uh, and then you would text those people, reaching out to them via text message. Now, Dave, where would people find a list? Let's talk about that real quick. Um, where would they find a list? Uh, PropStream would be the best place to find a list, in my opinion, just because you're going to be able to get a lot more bang for your buck. It's a monthly cost. However, um, you get, I think it's 10,000 uh, downloads from that list a month and you can easily upgrade for another 10 or 20 bucks to get that number up to like 40 or 50,000 downloads versus going to like list source and paying, you know, 15, 17, 20 cents a lead. I remember when I first started, I was paying like 20 cents a lead. And now it's like, if I pay more than a penny for a lead on a list, it's like, that's just crazy to me. So yeah, prop stream would definitely be where I would go. Um, and uh, we'll put a link in our show notes for you guys to get a free trial. Yeah, I love it. So, and then, uh, yeah, I think the link is dpipodcast.com backslash comps. Yep. Yeah. So you just go to comps and then we'll have that there for you. So that's a really cool one. Um, the next thing I would say would be in level of cost is direct mail. So again, you're going to spend a little bit more money on this one and it is going to take much less of your time. So again, we're kind of working that scale. Um, and direct mail, pretty simple. Uh, when I started out, yellow letters were the hot thing. Everybody was pushing, hey, write a handwritten letter that says, hello, and the owner's name. My name is, and then put your name there. I would like to buy your house at this address. Call me, and then your phone number. Just as simple as that. So you just write the, a handwritten letter, throw it in an envelope, send it out, and wait for them to call you. So it's, you're the least amount of your time required. But again, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Now, the, the next one is, that I have is uh, um, online ads. Like using, let's say, Facebook uh, to advertise to motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. or using Google AdWords to market for motivated sellers. So then they would click on maybe a landing page uh, or of your website, something like that, or an ad in uh, Google, you know, and they're going to click on it and then either call you or click on your landing page and fill it out. So then you're going to have the motivated sellers reaching out to you. Uh, now, this one is probably the most expensive uh, but again, it's going to be the, probably the least time consuming. Like once you get it set up or you have a manager for your campaigns, you're not spending a lot of time on this uh, relative to say networking where you have to get dressed, go out uh, or cold calling and texting. We're spending a lot of time doing those activities. Uh, and I, I left out uh, one of the big ones, which is bandit signs. Shoot. Where would I put yeah, that on the bandit list? Bandit signs and driving for dollars. Now I'm going to just put those uh, probably after networking. Yeah. Um, you know, just somewhere in that range. Uh, give me one second. Let me save it and you'll see it. Boom. There you go. So um, types of marketing, I, I would say driving for dollars is going to be, you know, it's more expensive um, and more time consuming than networking, especially if you're using an app like we use. We use Deal Machine. And its signs are going to probably be a little bit more than that because you're going to have to pay per sign. In addition to driving them around and in putting them up. To driving around and then cold calling and texting, you're going to have to pay for those leads. 
again, unless you're getting those leads from driving for dollars or something along those lines, you're typically typically still going to be buying those those leads. So uh, yeah, I think we got ourselves a pretty good list right here, Mike. Um, there's other lots of other ways though, guys. There's a million other ways to find motivated sellers. Uh, direct mail marketing is one of my favorites. Online ads is another good one. We love driving for dollars. Um, I'm going to add another one on here and that's going to be, you know, big media. I'm going to, I'm just going to go broad with it. Big media, which is going to be, you know, radio and TV. And when you first get started, that might not be an option for you. Uh, but we run radio ads and, you know, we only spend like, we spend about, uh, maybe two grand a month right now. Uh, we were spending double that at one point, but we've scaled back. Um, so you don't have to have a crazy budget. I mean, you could essentially get on the radio um, and have several ads playing a week for under a thousand bucks. So, you know, definitely do not discount these, these big media or bigger media. So you're talking billboards, you're talking radio, possibly TV, uh, bandit sign on wheels you can do with, you know, bandit signs on the back of people's cars. Or you can hire the pros to do bandit sign on wheels and actually get the city buses and get your message on those buses. And I'm not sure if I mentioned the billboards or not, but that's also another great way uh, to get your message out there, guys. So tons of ways, lots of online ways, like Mike had mentioned, um, online advertising like pay-per-click or even doing SEO to your own website. Um, of course, social media is huge. I'm going to add social media in there. I'm going to put that at the very top because social media doesn't cost you anything. And it's really just you telling everybody that you are in the house buying business. I think Mike led with this when we first got started, but uh, social media is huge and it's free. So tell everybody what business you are in. And that business is the uh the home buying business all right you always need to be marketing yourself and your business so look at that pretty cool little list right there mike I, man i love it so yeah i mean that's a pretty good episode guys i mean you have to be marketing oh dave the best way to market is to follow up with your leads oh i, I can't add believe that, we didn't add that yeah. so follow up baby follow up follow up follow up once you talk to someone, if you say, ah, they're not motivated, great, doesn't matter. You know what you need to do? You need to follow up with them. Every one of these leads you have paid for in some way, either your time or your money. So you have to follow up with your leads. When you're just starting out, I completely understand using a notepad or an Excel spreadsheet, something simple to help you remember uh, the names of the people who called, the phone numbers, taking some notes on them. And that is an awesome way to get started. You have to document these people uh, so that you remember what you spoke about last time. Once you progress a little bit more, you're going to start to find it a little bit challenging. It's, it's, it can be overwhelming once you're working with 100, 200, 500 leads to remember, oh, I got to follow up with this guy in a month. We got to follow up with this guy in two weeks. Got to follow up with this guy. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you're going to have to follow up with. You can try to do that with your calendar. I suggest getting a CRM. We have uh, one that we absolutely love. And I think it's dpipodcast.com uh, forward slash CRM. Let me look at CRM. It up. Yep. Yeah, CRM. So you're going to go there and you're going to find the CRM that we use. Uh, this one is awesome. It allows you to build um, landing pages. It has call tracking. So if you have, you can have different numbers for different things. There's uh, task management and follow-up. That's basically your task management. So when you, uh, when you are off the phone with that person, you can assign yourself a task to call them back in three weeks. Boom. Next time you log into your CRM, it's going to remind you, hey, you have to call this person back. So again, that to me is probably one of the most powerful marketing things is follow-up. I know it sounds silly. It doesn't even really seem like a marketing thing. But to me, that is the most important thing in this business is to follow up with your leads. I totally agree, Mike. I love that. I think a lot of people discount that. We almost missed it. Yeah. You know, you spend a ton of money to build these leads and to get these leads and get people calling you. 
And if you are not following up consistently, I think one of my favorite sayings is consistent, persistent action. You have to consistently be following up with these leads. Otherwise, you are basically just lighting your money on fire. So you definitely want to have a killer CRM to keep track of the leads that are coming in. Keep track of the conversations that you are having with these sellers. And last but not least, create a task. Basically, give yourself an assignment for at a later time and a later date. How else are you going to remember to call Jan or Sue or Tony back that you know you talked to today, but the follow up doesn't require you to talk to them for maybe six weeks? You know, are you really going to remember that? Times that by three hundred people, you know, a month or a quarter that you're adding to your system? No way in hell, right? So you definitely have to have a CRM in place. The CRM that we use, um, I will just drop the name, Mike, because uh, the link we give them anyway has a thousand dollars off, basically. But the the CRM that we use right now is is REI Blackbook, and um, it's not the cheapest one out there. We're not going to tell you that you know this is a this is going to be the the cheapest one by any means but it's one of the most powerful and it allows us to automate some of that follow up actually most of that follow up so we can uh you know be focusing our time and our energy on doing other things like more marketing right so this CRM will allow you to follow up kind of on autopilot you can do text sequences call sequences uh you can even do ringless voicemails um, all kinds of cool bells and whistles to help automate that process. Again, that's REI Blackbook. That's who we use. It's who I, it's my favorite CRM out there. Um, and if you guys go to dpipodcast.com forward slash uh, CRM, I was drawing a blank there, dpipodcast.com forward slash CRM. Um, Damon, the owner of that company, is a great friend of mine, and he actually hooked us up with a, um, with the ability for all of our all of our listeners and students to to waive the nine hundred and ninety seven dollar fee to join, so you can join this uh, this without having to pay that license fee. That's huge. It's a thousand dollars that's saved. There are other platforms out there that will that will easily get you by that may be free or even cheaper. Uh, but if you guys are looking for the real powerhouse, something that's going to be able to give you the ability to not only do the front end of the business, which is the acquisitions, the websites, the landing pages, the phone numbers, the call systems, but also the disposition side of the business. And that's where most CRMs have nothing to offer, right? They do. They have the websites to sell these properties. They have the email lists and the text blasting capabilities all in one place. Again, that's REI Blackbook. And to get that, uh, to get that at a killer deal, Go to dpipodcast.com forward slash CRM and uh, we'll waive, or they, I should say they, uh, and, and we're so grateful to them for this, but they will waive that $997 fee, that license fee to join. So definitely go check that out, guys. All right, guys. Anything else, Dave, you want to add or let's wrap this one up? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good list, guys. Uh, again, I think that there there's going to be a lot of people that may comment on this. I'm going to throw this up on the YouTube here, Mike. But mm -hmm. there might be a lot of people that comment on this and say, you know, that there's there's all these other ways to market. And you are right. I mean, there's literally a million ways to market. So if you're watching this, um, you know, comment down below some of the other ways that you like to market. Some of the I love ways it. I love that 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 we're missing. You know, here is just a couple of the things that we do. But again, there's an infinite amount of ways. And last but not least, if you are new, don't spend a ton of your time and energy trying to do 10 of these things or learn 10 of these things, right, Mike? Only pick one and get good at it or at least do it, right? Do it a couple times. And then from there, you can find a second or a third thing to do or even better, find somebody else to help you do these things so you can outsource it and have multiple going. But if you are new, that's one of the biggest mistakes people can make. I know I made that mistake when I first started. And that was basically, you know, trying to go out and do five or six different types of marketing and half ass all of them and do some of them wrong, right? So keep it simple. That's the message today, guys. Lots of different types. If there's something that we miss, 
drop it down below in the comments. And if you're listening, the conversation continues over at dpipodcast.com. Every one of these shows we drop in there and uh, there's a place where you can comment and, and, and Mike and I are in there as well. So the conversation continues over there as well. I think that's all I got, Mike. Close all right, us guys. Out. Thanks for listening. Signing off, guys. We'll see you next time.